my Lord and my God. Affirm my belief that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. I was very lucky to do my seminary years in Rome, Italy. And when I first got there, I didn't speak a word of Italian. Well, I guess I did know a few words like pizza or gelato or pasta. But besides that, not much more. And I had a few weeks before classes began and classes would be in Italian. So I needed to move and learn something to make sure I would be understanding. So I went down to the library of the seminary, started looking around, and very quickly I found exactly what I needed. A book that said on the cover, Learn Italian Without Effort. That was exactly what I wanted, to learn Italian without making much of an effort, to learn quickly and well. I took the book, of course, you know, the end of the story, I studied, that book didn't really help that much, um, it's really impossible to learn a language without effort or anything. But somehow we all fall for these things. There's tons of books and videos and all kinds of websites that promise to give us everything without much effort. The three vegetables you need to eat to lose weight, the five exercises you need to get ripped, etc, etc, etc. It makes sense. We want to get things following the easiest road. We always want to take the shortcut. It's kind of like ingrained in our nature. Why make it hard if we can make it easy? Well, I'm sure we would all follow to the smallest detail, a list that would promise us in eight with eight tips that we can follow to be rich, right? To be millionaires. Follow these eight tips and you'll be a millionaire. I can assure you this. I'm sure we would all take that list and make our best to really follow those eight tips. I guess it won't hurt us to be millionaires. We can do a lot of good with a lot of money. Well, that is what Jesus is doing with us. In the gospel we will read today, and of course, much better than that. Jesus is telling us, follow these eight tips, these eight beatitudes. And you will be happy. You will be a saint. You will enjoy something much better than millions of dollars. Happiness, that's where the word beatitude comes from. It actually comes from blessedness, the blessedness in Latin, the word beatus. Beati, beatitudini, it means both happy and blessed. So Jesus is telling us, blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit will be happy here on earth and then for all eternity in heaven. Blessed are they who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the clean of heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Blessed are they when they insult you and persecute you. And this is not just anyone. 
promising us happiness, blessedness. It is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He's promising us that we will be blessed if we follow these Beatitudes. Of course, he's not saying that it won't require effort. We know that it will require a big effort. It's not easy to be poor in spirit. It's not easy to mourn. It's not easy to be meek, merciful, clean of heart, to be a peacemaker. These are all very difficult virtues to acquire. But in the way Jesus is putting them out there for us to follow, the road. And of course, he gives us the example. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. We need to follow him, who is the perfect incarnation of all these Beatitudes. And Jesus Christ has promised us those who live those Beatitudes. What does he promise them? Different things. He says, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Or they will see God. Or they will be satisfied. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. What else do we want? A million dollars won't really make us happy. I guess you know that, because it, I guess it helps in life, makes things easier. But it won't make you happy. Getting all the ice cream you can is not going to make you happy. Getting ripped and have the perfect body is not going to make you happy. And they're not bad things in themselves. They might help. But eventually we get old and we lose our perfect body. Eventually we get too much ice cream and it's not that attractive anymore. Or we have too much money and we always want more. We really can't buy happiness with money or friends. Well, Jesus is promising us true happiness, the kind that will never run out, the kind that will last for all eternity, the reward that will be great in heaven, that treasure that really matters. And the way to obtain this is right there in front of our eyes. Live these Beatitudes. Poor in spirit. Learn to mourn. Learn to be meek. Offer up your hunger. Right? Thirst for righteousness. And these things that, of course, each one of them required, requires a lot of thinking, a lot of praying, a lot of understanding. But maybe you can make yourself like a checklist. And then one by one, start looking at them, understanding what they mean, and trying to see if you're living those different requirements that Jesus places for us to be happy. And slowly, with effort, with the grace of God, with the help of a mentor in your life, a spiritual director, someone, try to live these attitudes more and more, knowing that here is the key for your happiness on earth, for your reward in heaven for all eternity. I guess it's worthwhile. Let's give it a shot. Let's make ourselves that checklist. Let's pray to God that we have the strength that requires to live all these things. Let us ask our mother, Mary, to help us because she was the one that lived these attitudes better than anyone else. But Mother, intercede for us so that we can also live these Beatitudes and eventually receive all those rewards from God, the Kingdom of Heaven, the reward that will be eternal in Heaven. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. 
my Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.